Last year, I put a GTX 1080 into the Potato Basher. If you don't know what the Potato Basher is, it's a $375 PC from late 2014, early 2015 that I use to compare against consoles and I'm comparing against the PS4 specifically for the rest of its life cycle to show you what you can do with a budget gaming setup. But I put a GTX 1080 in it last year to answer the question, how bad would that old i5-750 processor bottleneck a modern high-end GPU even if it was overclocked and I compared it against my personal rig running a 4790K and a 980Ti. So this time I am putting my brand new MSI GTX 1080Ti into the potato masher and I'm comparing it against my personal rig also running the 1080Ti. So here's what we're going to do. I am comparing four games, Battlefield 1, The Witcher 3, Doom, and Dishonored 2. These run the gamut from not much CPU usage like in Doom to really, really demanding CPU usage like Battlefield 1. Uh, and the goal is to see how bad the i5-750 in the Potato Basher bottlenecks a 1080Ti. It is going to bottleneck, to be clear. There's absolutely going to be a bottleneck. Even overclocked to 3.7 gigahertz, which is not that extreme for an i5-750, but it's a lot on a cheap cooler, which is what I'm using. Uh, it's, it's going to make a, a difference for sure. So I don't really care if there is a difference. I care how big the difference is and if it's bad enough that you wouldn't want to do it. Like, I know this is a little bit of a ridiculous comparison by its very nature, it's supposed to be, but I wanna see just how good a really old CPU can do with a really, really high-end GPU. And this GPU is good enough that like, there are some games where my 4790K in my computer probably holds me back just a little bit. Like, that's the type of level we're on here. Uh, but before we get started, let's run over the specs in each computer. Now, if you watched this video last year, pay attention because some of the stuff has changed. So, my personal rig is running an i7-4790K at stock clocks for the purpose of this comparison. 32 gigs of 2400 megahertz DDR3 RAM, a 1080Ti, um, an EVGA Supernova power supply, a 240 gig boot SSD, a one terabyte games SSD, the rest of the games are on a two terabyte spindle drive, and I've got a, a Nashua D14 CPU cooler. The Potato Masher normally runs an i5-750 overclocked to 3.7 gigahertz, that's the same for now. Eight gigs of 1333 megahertz RAM, uh, an MSI GTX 760, the Potato Masher Pro runs a, a gigabyte GTX 1060. In this case, they're running the MSI GTX 1080 Ti. Normally, the Potato Basher runs a 430 watt EVGA power supply. However, that only has one six pin power adapter. And while I can adapt that for the GTX 760, uh, the MSI GTX 1080 Ti that I have requires two eight pin adapters. So I plugged in a spare Corsair 650 watt power supply just for the purposes of this comparison. Uh, just to make sure that power wasn't going to be an issue and I wasn't endangering the power supply or the graphics card or anything else in the computer. So those are the specs of the two rigs. Uh, let's hop right into the game benchmarks. So for Doom, I did the arcade mode. I played through the first level using fraps. I recorded minimum, average, and maximum frame rates. Uh, I did this at 1080p, 1440p, and 4K. So without any further ado, let's hop into it. Uh, my personal rig averaged 142 FPS and maxed out at 186 at 1080p, and this is with all the settings absolutely maxed out for all of these games. I turned every setting up that I could. Um, the, the Potato Masher with the 1080Ti averaged 117 and maxed out at 162. So quite a bit slower, but those are still really high frame rates. And then at 1440p, still everything maxed out, my personal rig averaged 136 with a max of 189. So it almost looks like my computer maybe had a little bit of a CPU bottleneck at 1080p, although I think that might actually be an engine bottleneck because CPU usage was pretty low. Uh, but at 1440p, my computer's barely any slower than it was at 1080p. Uh, the Masher is also barely any slower. It averages 112 FPS and maxes out at 164. And then finally at 4K, my computer averages 87, maxes out at 101 and the Potato Masher averages 82 and maxes out at 108. So a slightly higher max, but I wouldn't really pay that much attention to the max um, because depending on what's going on on screen, like the CPU could spike way up or, you know, or the frame rate could spike way up. You never know what's going to happen. Same thing with the minimum frame rate. If the minimum frame rate is really, really low, that's probably an issue or it could just be an aberration. So what percentage difference are we looking at here? Well, at 1080p and 1440p, uh, the Masher was 17.6% slower than my computer. And then at 4K, the Masher was 5.7% slower. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking. 
So sure, we have average frame rates here, we have minimum frame rates, we have maximum, we have what percentage difference there is. But what about frame timing? If you don't know what frame timing is, frame timing is the time in between frames. Uh, and you want consistent frame timing so your gameplay footage feels smooth. If you've ever played a game like Bloodborne, Bloodborne runs at a pretty consistent 30 FPS on PS4, uh, but the game feels really choppy. That's because the frame timing is all over the place, so you can have 30 frames in a second, but if they're not evenly spaced, it's not going to feel smooth, and it's really bad. So, uh, for the rest of the games in this comparison, I actually do have frame time graphs I can show you. Now, they're pretty basic, like I just took screen grabs off MSI Afterburner, so this is not nearly as good as like an FCAT analysis or anything else. This is more of like a quick and dirty comparison, just so you can see the differences you might be looking at here. So, a relatively consistent frame time is going to be better than one that's all over the place. You have to keep in mind that there's going to be some spikes and stuff because I'm running an unlocked frame rate on all, both machines. So the frame timing is not going to be incredibly consistent, but you want to see large aberrations. So anyway, moving on to Battlefield 1. At 1080p with everything absolutely maxed out, my computer averaged 169 and maxed out at 201. This is during the opening uh, the opening level of the single player campaign. And then the Potato Masher averaged 95 and maxed out at 131. So that is significantly slower. Uh, at 1440p, my computer averaged 128 and then maxed out at 152. The Masher averaged 90, maxed out at 112. So also significantly slower. And then finally at 4K, uh, my computer averaged 78, maxed out at 87. The Masher averaged 81 and maxed out at 97. It actually did a little bit better, even though the minimum frame rate was a little bit lower. Again, the difference between 78 and 81 average, taking over, you know, one chunk of playtime, that's not really that big of a deal. Like, I wouldn't consider that to be a massive difference um, either way. So even though the Masher did slightly better, it's probably not a better computer overall than my personal one, but whatever. Um, so let's t check out some percentages. At 1080p, the Masher is 44% slower. At 1440p, it's 29.7% slower. And then at 4K, it's 3.8% faster, but I would consider anything within 5% to be more or less a wash unless the frame timing shows some big differences. So let's look at those frame timing graphs. Like I said, uh, these are pretty unscientific, but you, if you see a trend, you know, that might tell you something. So you're going to notice a big spike at the beginning and then a spike at the end of the recordings. That's where I'm starting or stopping uh, fraps. So that shouldn't be counted against what's going on. Um, so you can see at 1080p, looks like the masher is a little bit less consistent. Um, at 1440p, I don't know why the graph for my rig inverted like that, um, but both computers look pretty similar. And then at 4K, also, there's not much of a difference. The Master has a little more variance to it, and my computer has one more spike. So no huge, massive differences, even though there's pretty big differences in frame rate itself. All right, Dishonored 2. Uh, so, Dishonored 2 actually has an in-game cap of 120 FPS, so put down your pitchforks, I knew that going into it, but I did want to see how close we could get to that cap, and at 1080p with everything completely maxed out, my computer averaged 120, maxed out at 121, cool, uh, and the Masher averaged 118 and topped out at 121 as well. And then at 1440p, my computer averaged 115, Masher aver uh, maxed out at 121, while the Masher averaged 114, maxed out at 120. Barely any difference again. And then this is another interesting one. Uh, this is during the opening tutorial level. Um, at 4K, my computer averaged 65 and maxed out at 79, and then the Masher averaged 70 and maxed out at 81, and even had a slightly higher minimum frame rate of 55. So honestly, I have no idea why the Masher was getting better results. It shouldn't be. It has a slower hard drive, um, much slower CPU. I mean, no real idea what the difference is. I ran the test a couple times. For whatever reason, on this particular day, the Masher was getting slightly better results. So here you are. So 1080p, um, the Masher was 1.7% slower, that's a tie. Uh, at 1440p, 0.9% slower, again, that's a tie, because there's an in-game 120 FPS cap, so who cares? And then at 4K, uh, it's 7.7% faster, which, I, which is actually enough that I would consider that to be a real result. Uh, I'm just confused about exactly how it got that result. All I can figure is that my computer was having an off day on this particular game. Dishonored 2 is not an incredibly well-optimized game, so that is something worth keeping in mind. That could have been the entire difference right there. Uh, it just, for some reason, likes something on the Masher better than my computer, so whatever. But here's where it gets a little interesting. So if you look at the frame timing, at 1080p, where both computers are more or less maxing this all the way out, 
Notice how the masher had a minimum frame rate of 106, and then look at the frame time graph. There's a lot more spikes than there is on my computer. So there actually is some inconsistency there, and there is less consistent frame timing on the potato masher, possibly due to the CPU not being as good. And then at 1440p, you see the same thing. Um, ignore the big spikes at the beginning and the end, but you see more small spikes on the masher. And then at 4K as well, um, there's actually some big spikes on the masher, which is kind of weird because when I was playing, I didn't feel anything incredibly massive, uh, but there you have it. You can see it right there. So very interesting, even though the masher was a little bit faster at 4K and pretty much tied at 1080p and 1440p, I wouldn't really look at that and say that it did incredibly well uh, because the frame timing is definitely noticeably worse. Um, and then finally, The Witcher 3. The Witcher 3 is a very demanding game, CPU and GPU. That's the reason I'm using it in this comparison. Um, so at 1080p, everything completely maxed out. My computer averaged 148, maxed out at 169. The masher averaged 97 and topped out at 111 with a minimum frame rate of 79. So that's not great. Um, and then at 1440p, my computer averaged 102, maxed out at 124. And then the masher averaged 83, maxed out at 98. And then finally at 4K, my computer averaged 58, maxed out at 68. And then uh, the masher averaged 55, topped out at 60. So, I mean, this is good results. Like when I first played The Witcher 3, I had to play it at uh, 4K 30 FPS with everything maxed out and occasionally dip below 30 FPS until I dropped the settings down to high. So, like these are really, really good results and I'm looking forward to going back and playing The Witcher at 4K and essentially 60 FPS. So, I'm excited. Uh, but the masher at 1080p was 35.5% slower. At 1440p, it was 18.6% slower. And then at 4K, it was 5.2% slower. So not a significant difference. But let's look at those frame time timing graphs. Um, so at 1080p, you can see a huge difference, huge difference in consistency. Same thing at 1440p. The masher is much, much less consistent with the frame rate. Frame timing spikes, or frame timing, sorry. Frame timing spikes all over the place. And then at 4K, uh, same story. It's not quite as bad but it's not nearly as good as uh, my computer is. And the difference is my computer has a faster CPU, even at stock clocks. Uh, the IPC or like the performance per core is higher and then it's also hyper threaded. So any game that can take advantage of more than four cores is gonna be better on my CPU. But here is an important takeaway that you should keep in mind when you're looking at all these results. In pretty much every game, while the masher isn't as good as my computer and you wouldn't expect it to be given how cheap it is, it's above 60 FPS. And that frame timing might not be as good, but if you put a manual frame rate cap on it, like if you ran V-Sync even, not even a good V-Sync, just V-Sync, which I wasn't using in this test, uh, you could expect to have much more consistent frame timing. And it looks like you'd be above 60 FPS in pretty much every game. So if you have like a 1440p 144 Hertz monitor or one of the new 4K 144 Hertz monitors, you know, it's probably a pretty bad idea to pair an i5-750 with a 1080 Ti, which I think most of you knew when you were going into this video. Uh, but if you had an i5-750 or an i7-920 or, you know, an i5-2500K, um, 3570K, something like that, it's not crazy to pair that with a high-end GPU like a 1080 Ti. Like, if you could tell me, hey, I can buy a 1070 and a new Ryzen 7 1700 setup, or... I could keep my 3570K or my 2500K and I could get a 1080 Ti and I mostly just play games with this thing, which one should I do? I would tell you to get the better in GPU because you can keep that for a while and you can upgrade your CPU later. Good CPUs last a really, really long time. If this video should tell you anything, it should tell you that. And even if it is quite a bit slower than like a 4790K, which while it's not a top of the line processor anymore, is still a really good processor for gaming. Um, the i5-750 in the masher is capable of maintaining 60 FPS in the four games I tested here in pretty much all scenarios. So it may not be as good as a 4790K, but it's not that bad. So what'd you guys think about the video? Let me know in the comments. Hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.